It's April Fools and I've got just the video for that. Whether you're right next to a colleague or working with them remotely, there's loads of pranks that you can do on them with your favorite office applications. So we're going to go through stuff in Excel, Word, Outlook, PowerPoint, Teams. If you're using technology at your desk, then I am definitely covering it on my channel. So subscribe if you want more of that awesome stuff. New videos coming out every week. So here I've got Excel, Outlook, Word, and PowerPoint. And let me show you a sneak peek of how these pranks look for the person being pranked. So whenever you type in anything in Excel, you get this virus detected. Your information will be deleted. Press any key to continue. Uh, it doesn't matter if you type in numbers, if you go to another cell, you will still get it in the same way. Um, here in Outlook, someone is writing an email. And then when you say kind regards and then enter, and then sign your name, it says, now don't ever contact me again, you moron. <laughs> and because you're probably doing that very fast and then pressing send, the person doing it might not realize. Um, next, you have here, this is in Word. So similar kind of idea, but more elaborate. So when you type in something and you press enter, it says, every evening I turn into a monster. Uh, the next few paragraphs will make no sense. I follow the mood and there's that monster you've turned into. And finally here in PowerPoint, so if I go to slideshow mode, then I have this, oh, this scary devil that pops up in every one of my slides. Here we are in Excel, and what I can do is I have set it up so that when someone types in whatever that is, be a text or a number, it just disappears as soon as they type it. The number is still there, so it does still exist. I just put in a special number format setting that did that. So. Let me show you what I did. So you can select this area, and if I go to number format like this, I can see that the custom is this, three semicolons. If I take them off and put, for example, general, then it's fine. But if I do it on existing data or whatever, or press Control A to select the whole worksheet, then if you go here and choose custom, in type you can just write three semicolons and press OK, and then it gets rid of them. <laughs> so there is a sneaky one in Excel. Another sneaky one is the one that I showed you in the intro. So what you can do is you can create your own custom error message that looks exactly like a standard Windows error message. So you can just select some data or select the whole sheet if you want to, and then go to the data tab and choose data validation. Data validation is an amazing feature and everyone should learn how to use it. I've got loads of videos on it, but that's not what this is about. This is about going to decimal, pressing equal to, and just typing in 74.92173. And then go to error alert. And we're going to say, you're fired. Stop messing around and making mistakes. Press OK. Of course, you can enter whatever you want here. And then they will get that error message. And I love how it looks like a genuine Windows error message. So whatever they type in, unless it's that exact number, which is kind of like a password, they will get that error message. How do you get rid of it? Select all, Control A, click on data validation. Uh, you might get this. So whatever it is, you can just say yes and then Clear all will get rid of everything, and then you're back to normal without it. <laughs> the Outlook one that can replace text, and this one I owe to Dan Rowe and Phil Shropshaw, two of my work colleagues from my first job, who actually did this to me one April Fools. The way that you set that up or remove it is if you go to File and then Options, and then you go to In Mail, auto Spelling and Autocorrect, Autocorrect Options, and then you can add it here. So, for example. I have here kind regards, I can search for it. I can now delete it and let me add a new one. So I'm going to say cheers and let's say go away like that. Press add, okay, okay, and okay again. And now every time you say the word cheers and press enter, it replaces that with something that you might wanna do. Now there's loads of practical use cases for this. For example, one that I use all the time is the ability to swap two of these characters for an up arrow, two of these characters for a left, like that, and double semicolon like that. Two things that you would never type together. To do that, you can go to insert symbol, and then go to more symbols and get all of these, 
just put them in as you need to and then just make sure that it is in copy when you go in to add that there. Well, for example, these two I'm going to replace with that. Of course, it's already there as you can see it. There are some built-in arrow ones. I personally find that these are my favorites. They're a bit less aggressive than the thick ones, but yeah, that's something you can do for it. I have that set up in all of my Microsoft Office. So Excel, PowerPoint, um, Word and Outlook. I love these arrows and I use them across it. This technique does work in all of the apps, but I find for Outlook, it probably works the best. So in Word, quite similar to the autocorrect in Outlook, but a little bit more sophisticated. It can take images, including GIFs, if you have Office 365 like this. <laughs> uh, what you can do is, as people start typing it, you get this, and then you have to press Enter to lock it in. The truth is, from all of the pranks, this is maybe the one that's least likely to work, but I still wanted to include a word option in there. And it's still a pretty cool trick to know. So what you can do is you can type everything out. So let's just add some new stuff. You can select it. Any combination of images, GIFs, go to the Insert tab, choose to go to Quick Parts. And then in Auto Text, I have this one. I'm going to save selection to the gallery. I'm going to change the text that automatically does it. So let's say scary, press OK. So now whenever I am typing in scary, I can press enter to lock it in and it does that. And also if you want to put it in on your own, you can press quick parts and add it here. Uh, again, this does work in Outlook as well as Word. Um, I actually use it a few times in Outlook to have sort of canned responses to emails that I sometimes get. It works in exactly the same way in Outlook and Word. Really quick one in Teams, just change your status message. So if you click on the person's picture, then go to edit status message. Currently it says this, <laughs> our boss cannot be trusted. So you can click to edit there or edit here if it doesn't show up and you can type whatever you want here. Uh, you can choose this one, show when people message me, so that just so it gets more traction. And then you get this that pops up and says it's available just today, but you can change the expiry date. So here we are in PowerPoint, and whenever someone goes to slideshow mode, Shift F5, they will, without clicking anything else, get this kind of scary little devil that appears there. And on every slide, this happens as soon as they open the slide. When they add a new slide, whatever they write in here, whatever contents they draw on it, they will still get that happening. There we go. <laughs> and they don't know it's happening. Obviously, the slide looks completely normal. They can't see anything unusual there. Let's see how it's done. So I'm going to go to a new file, Control N, and I'm going to go to the View tab and choose the Slide Master. So here you can click on the top one, and then anything you add here will put go in the default slide without anyone being able to click on certain things if there's an image. So for example, I can go here and choose the home tab and then make it all red text. And also I can insert, let's say an icon. And you get all of these if you have Office 365, like thousands, tens of thousands of assets that you can use for free in your slides. I'm gonna go to stickers and I'm gonna look for something spooky or scary. There you go. This guy's pretty scary. So probably something I wouldn't do in a corporate presentation, but it's April Fool's. Let's make it funny. So I'm going to put this one underneath the slide like this. And then if I go to the normal view, let's see how it looks. So there is red text and there is this guy. I can't click on him because he's in the slide master. If I add a new slide, then I still get him. This is still red text and I can do whatever I want in this slide, but that happens. So next step, I'm gonna go back here, but hold shift to go back to the slide master or the top slide. And then I'm going to add some animations. So go to the animations tab and we're going to choose that. This is a custom path and just kind of draw a thing like that. 
press escape when you're done with the path. And that's how it'll look. Also, we're going to click on that and add an animation for a grow shrink. And it's going to grow into a larger size. But then we're going to put them together by clicking on animation pane, and shift clicking both of them and choosing that they start with previous. This will mean that they start as soon as the slide happens. We can also uh, add the duration. So maybe make that like six seconds. And next, what we're gonna do is pretty sneaky. We're gonna go to the home tab and draw a rectangle and draw it on top of this image and then change the fill color. But we're not gonna guess which one to use. We're gonna use this thing called the eyedropper. I love the eyedropper. So many use cases to bring it with the exact color of something else in your slide, as long as you click that. Then shape outline, no outline. And then if I go back here, the user cannot see that. <laughs> so next, whatever they do, when they have a new slide and they go to slideshow mode, they get this <laughs> crazy guy appearing like that on any new slide, this slide as well. There we go. <laughs> Final one, and this one I got from Minda, who is fellow YouTuber and fellow Excel MVP with her YouTube channel is My Online Training Hub. So if you search for a setting, let's say orientation, you can change the orientation of the display, go here and choose landscape flipped. Ah ha ha. Why would you ever want to do that? I have no idea, but I'm just going to revert now. But obviously, you could keep changes on your colleague's computer <laughs> and then have them undo it. Well, if you like that video, then give me the like button and also subscribe to my channel for more awesome content. I've got weekly videos coming out on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Power BI, Teams, Zoom, etc. If you're using it at your office, then I have videos covering it. Thanks for watching.